So uh, hello, everyone. My name is Darren. I'm one of the marketing coordinators with uh, BCIT School of Health Sciences, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this information session for the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program. I'd like to mention how happy we are to see you all. Thank you very much for uh, attending this presentation today. And I wanted to let you know that uh, we are using um, a Q&A function. So if you have questions, uh, you can put them in the questions and answers uh, window, and that would be great. We'll answer those uh, when we can, maybe some during and uh, some at the end in the questions and answers segment. And if I could please ask everyone to keep your microphones and videos turned off uh, just until the end of the presentation to reduce connectivity issues and uh, interruptions during the recording. And uh, we are recording this uh, so that we can send you a link to the recording um, sometime next week. And um, you'll also get a copy of the slide deck, so no need to feel like you need to take notes the whole time. And just before we get going, uh, the British Columbia Institute of Technology acknowledges that our campuses are located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam. Our agenda for today is uh, welcome and introductions. We're going to do a quick poll just to find out where everyone is at. We'll go through the presentation and program overviews. We'll have some uh, program advising information, and then we'll do the questions and answers at the very end. It is my pleasure to welcome Heather Burke and Ken Markin, who are the program heads and instructors for the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program. And I'm not sure who's speaking first, but uh, feel free to uh, take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. It's Ken. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our information session. Let me provide you with a little bit of an overview of diagnostic medical sonography, uh, sometimes referred to as ultrasound. And in our program, you would learn how to use high frequency sound waves in order to examine various parts inside the body, such as the heart, potentially, if you're doing cardiac sonography, or on the general side, perhaps the abdomen, pelvis, we look at the thyroid, as well as the scrotum, breast, and blood vessels. And of course, everyone thinks of ultrasound. Uh, when they think of ultrasound, they think of obstetrical imaging. And that's something that we offer in our program as well. So you'll get to um, learn to scan the developing fetus by using our simulators. And then of course, once you get into clinical, you'll actually have opportunity to scan real patients in the hospital or clinic. So it's always important uh, to convey that um, each patient comes with a unique set of needs. And as a student, you will learn the diagnostic problem solving skills and team collaboration skills to give each patient the highest quality of care. So just some fun facts about sonography. Uh, we are a diagnostic field. And so uh, we can actually look at pathology and um, identify the health of um, various organs and structures, and we can even look at the function of how the heart is actually working, for example, and um, we can actually uh, assist radiologists with biopsies and other interventional procedures, which um, certainly help in staging of malignancies or the health of different types of organs, especially if um, patients uh, are having chronic illnesses. Now, the neat thing about ultrasound is that it incorporates anatomy and physiology as well as physics. So uh, all these things are um, courses that you would take in our program and certainly incorporate it into uh, an ultrasound examination. Now, we are frontline workers. We provide direct patient care to patients. Majority of scans last anywhere between as little as, say, 15 to 20 minutes to as long as an hour. So you're actually spending a lot of time with your patient. And then we're also manipulating an ultrasound probe in order to achieve uh, ultrasound images. And eventually we collect all that information, review our images, write a technical report, and present that information to the uh, radiologist. We work in private hosp or public hospitals and private clinics here in British Columbia. And um, there's a lot of uh, different uh, employment opportunities, which we'll discuss a little bit later, but certainly full-time work, uh, Monday to Friday, but there's also evenings and weekends. So we have a number of options at BCIT. We have our diploma program in which we have our dual stream. 
And what that means is that you would actually train in both cardiac and general sonography. It's the longest program we have because it's 27 months in length. And the first uh, three terms are spent on campus, and then the remaining three terms are spent in clinical. Our general stream is the option that is 22 months in length, and you learn general sonography only. And just to let everyone know, general sonography includes both vascular sonography, looking at your carotid arteries and leg veins, as well as abdominal imaging, where we would look at the liver, kidneys, as well as the gallbladder. And with um, uh, pelvic or gynecological imaging, we can look at um, the uterus and ovaries, and of course, obstetrical imaging, where we look at the developing fetus. Now, we also have a cardiac advanced diploma program, which um, Heather's going to discuss a little bit more about. And it's a 12 month advanced diploma option in cardiac sonography only. So you'll need to have a, a pre existing health degree or diploma in an allied health field before you enter into this program. And um, Heather will tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. In the diploma program, we really value hands on learning here at BCIT. So we intake 36 students every year. Of those, 24 are um, for our dual program, and we have 12 seats for our general program. And as I was mentioning earlier, the first um, three terms are on campus where you actually get to uh, partake in a variety of different programs, learning about anatomy and physiology, as well as uh, sonographic principles and instrumentation, which is essentially our physics and, and applied instrumentation course, as well as all the theory behind ultrasound. And then, of course, we also get you guys to practice in the lab as well, too. Uh, the neat thing about sonography is that it is safe and uh, it's one of those um, types of imaging tools that we can actually scan each other. So students, when they're enrolled in the program, participate in labs where they take turns scanning each other for short periods of time, usually about 20 minutes each per every uh, lab session that we offer. Now, there's also a short clinical that um, students would uh, enter into and uh, during the summer, so usually about three weeks or so in length. And then, of course, our final terms, uh, you have a year long sort of set of clinical where you take um, clinical training throughout British Columbia, typically spending some time outside the lower mainland, whether that happens to be in interior health or northern Vancouver Island, but otherwise, your training would be uh, in and around the lower mainland and the training could be at a, a large hospital or a small community hospital or even a private clinic. We try to give you as much variety as possible so you can experience various different types of patient types as well as um, different scenarios that you might experience in your working careers. All right, I think I'm going to pass it over to Heather now and I believe the next slide probably gets into a little bit more about um, our advanced diploma program. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, so that's correct. I'll talk about the cardiac advanced diploma program. So it's a little bit different uh, in that it's a compressed time frame. Uh, to get into the cardiac advanced diploma program, you need either a degree in science. Um, so that could be kinesiology, um, biology, chemistry. Uh, we even have... Um, masters or even uh, medical doctors who've come uh, and want to retrain into echocardiography um, because you have the higher prereqs, the program's shorter. Um, so it's just one year. You're full time on campus from January until May. And during that time, expect to be on campus Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, learning theory and labs. <clears throat> and we scan each other. So you'll be scanning each other's hearts throughout the time that you're on campus here. And then in term three, we start in June with our clinical rotations. And similar to what Ken just spoke about with the diploma program, we have clinical rotations across the province. Um, you will get to put your preferences, but that's no guarantee on where you're going to go. Um, so you'll be in the hospitals from December until June, uh, doing your clinical rotation full time again. 
And unlike the general program, we only work in hospitals. So there's no private clinics in the uh, cardiac world. It's all hospital-based. Uh, and similar to the diploma program as well, you'll go through several clinics. I believe you'll go through about four different clinical sites. So here's the kind of pathway into the cardiac advanced diploma program. You, there's two options, either one is fine. Option one is a Bachelor of Science. It has to be a science degree because we do have a lot of science courses in the program. Um, so examples are kinesiology, um, biomed, biology, chemistry, anything along those lines, even a, a doctorate degree in medicine. Um, the other way in is a two-year diploma in a health certification. So these are working professionals, ECG techs, the cardiology techs, x-ray techs, nuclear medicine techs, who want to, and who are working in the field and are certified with their um, certification board, and they want a new career. Uh, and so that's another pathway in. Um, so either of those are equally acceptable. And the choice between the cardiac advanced diploma and the diploma program, it's really up to you and there's pros and cons to both. So first of all, the prereqs are different. So if you don't have a Bachelor of Science, your only option is the diploma program. If you have a bachelor's, you have the option of the advanced diploma program or the full diploma program. With the advanced diploma program, you're only graduating in the cardiac field so that you won't be able to work in the general sonography field. That said, there is tons of full-time work out there. Um, I worked full-time in cardiac and never got bored, so don't let that scare you off. Um, the pro to this program is you're done in one year versus 22 to 27 months. So you're working quicker, making money quicker. So it really depends on what interests you. Are you interested in general sonography or cardiac sonography? Um, so I would, I would go based on what, what you want your career goals to be. Um, so the career outlooks are still looking pretty good. I, I graduated about 20 years ago, and I've never met a person who couldn't get a job. So that's good news. Um, right now, all of our students are walking into jobs, not necessarily all of them into full-time permanent. Some of them will be walking into, you know, mat leave, temporary replacements. Some of them are working a couple part-time jobs, but all of them are working in the field. Um, there's lots of job opportunities all across the province in both cardiac and general. So right now, the career outlook is very good. If you finish and graduate in the program, there's lots of kind of options for the rest of your career. Um, you can work as an echocardiographer. That's someone who has graduated from the cardiac sonography program uh, or the dual program. You can be a general sonographer who's doing the general sonographies. Um, you can also become department supervisors. So all pretty much all of the supervisors within the Lower Mainland started out as some sort of health professional, uh, as a ultrasound tech, x-ray tech, and then they slowly build their way up within the hospital system. There's also teaching settings, which is what Ken and I do right now. So we both started as sonographers and now we're teaching at BCIT. But we also have opportunities within the hospital itself. Because we send all of our students to the clinical sites, we have one designate at each site who, who is responsible for the student. So that's something if you're interested in teaching, you could volunteer for um, and you can help guide the student and help them through their clinical um, clinical rotation. There's a few other kind of areas you can go. There's clinical application specialists or sales reps. So this is working for the big companies, GE, Philips, Fuji, um, and promoting their, their um, uh, sales would obviously be promoting their machines. Clinical applications go to the hospitals and clinics and teach people how to use their machines, give them um, seminars and teach them like new tricks, keep them up to date with new technology. And again, those are always people, they started off as working sonographers and then decided to build up their career. And finally, there's volunteer work. So we have a sonography board where we're always looking for volunteers. Um, there's even been some international scanning opportunities over the years. So there is volunteer work available. Thank you very much, Heather and Ken. That was awesome. And I appreciate you being here and giving out all this great information. And uh, we are very fortunate today to have a program advisor online with us. And if um, Janice Pontus would like to uh, come online and talk about the admissions process, that would be excellent. Are you ready, Janice?
Absolutely. Thanks so much, Darren. So hello, everybody. Um, I'll be going over the entrance requirements, the application process, as well as a few of the student services that are available to you as a BCIT student. So you'll note the Cardiac Advanced Diploma Program begins January of each year, and we accept applications from May 1st to July 31st. The Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program begins September of each year, and we'll be accepting applications from October 2nd. 2023 through to January 5th, 2024. Also really important to note um, is that you must be a BC resident to apply to these programs. So filling out the online application is fairly straightforward. Um, at BCIT, uh, you do apply just on BCIT's website. Um, and once the program application opens, you can log in and review the online application. You can work on filling out the application at your own pace. It does not have to go to admissions until you pay the application fee. And that application fee is $90. Uh, the date you apply does not have an impact on your application you have until the application deadline. So they're basically gathering applications during the application um, period. Um, and it, you can then submit your completed application. So your first step is to thoroughly review all of the entrance requirements and the application processing dates. If you recognize um, that you'll need to upgrade, it's really important that you contact program advising and we can assist you with what your options are uh, for upgrading. You want to ensure that when you apply online, you have um, all of your required documents, such as transcripts, um, ready to scan and upload them as PDF files. The application process, like I said, is entirely online and you'll be self-reporting um, your grades or your transcripts. So bcit.ca backslash admission will guide you through the step-by-step -step application process. So check it out. So now let's review the entrance requirements, the specific entrance requirements for the program. So really important that you've got proficiency in speaking and listening, and that means you need to have two years of full-time education in English in an English-speaking country or equivalent uh, test or course. And if you need any help to work through that, certainly contact Program Advising. You need English 12, pre-calculus math 12, anatomy and physiology 12, all with 73 or higher. Physics 11, which is the, pref the, the preferred physics, uh, 73 or physics 12 or equivalent as well. I'm going to skip down to the mandatory applicant questionnaire. Um, this is your opportunity to highlight any non-academic experiences you have that will strengthen your application, as well to highlight your skills and abilities. Um, and you want to ensure that you take care and attention when completing the questionnaire. It's an important part of the application process. Uh, the CASPER uh, online test, the test utilizes everyday scenarios, maybe a moral dilemma is presented in the test. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer. You can't really study for the test as it's not knowledge based. However, there is a full 12 section CASPER sample test uh, that's available online. Um, but you need to register for the CASPER test and then you've got access to the sample tests. The sample test is free of charge for you to use. There's a lot of information on the CASPER site to help you prepare for the exam. So spend some time reviewing the information. Now, this being a competitive application process, it's important to note that um, there are some preferred things they're looking for for your application to be really competitive. Um, they'd like your math, biology, and physics requirements completed within the last five years. Some additional post-secondary education is going to strengthen your application. Uh, showing consistently good grades in previous education uh, is helpful. Uh, demonstrated interest in the field, doing some research, understanding the field, um, and then related um, and or work experience also enhances your application. More about the successful applicant profile. So there's no specific GPA that's required to apply, uh, to apply rather. However, a strong GPA is preferred as it shows an aptitude for post-secondary coursework. Your grades are just one piece of, of the big picture, really. So successful candidates are well-rounded. 
Um, selected applicants often possess consistently strong marks, a demonstrated interest in the field, and relevant and recent volunteer or work experience. B plus average, um, an advantage, especially in preferred courses that we're asking for. So the program's looking for volunteer or paid work experience, hours involving direct interaction with people in a healthcare setting. So preference for experience is within the last five years. So just a little bit more about the successful applicant profile, you'll see that 100% have completed at least two years of post-secondary education. Over 60% have a bachelor's degree or higher or two-year health sciences diploma with certification with another 25% applying in the final year of, um, of a bachelor's degree. 88% have experience working with vulnerable people and some volunteer experience in a healthcare setting, extended long-term care facility, retirement, seniors facility, or hospital, hospital wards are all good examples. And 100% um, have paid work experience of some type, typically in a customer or patient service area. Admissions process. Admissions reviews um, applications to ensure the requirements have been met. And once they've done that, admissions will forward um, your completed application to both faculty and the program head in DMS. Um, after the application deadline, um, the DMS department uh, shortlists and will contact you to book a virtual meeting and a visual spatial test. Conditionally accepted applicants will be required to take a medical terminology course, uh, certification in CPR level C, and do a criminal record check. Mandatory immunizations are also required. And at that point, you'll have to pay uh, a commitment fee, which is $500, and that money does go towards your tuition. So now I'd just like to briefly share information on the student services available to you at BCIT. Some are available to you as a prospective student and others once you become an enrolled student. Um, review all of these services available to you in detail on our student services website. So a couple of services I'd like to mention to you before you're accepted are, um, well, one being financial aid and awards. I really encourage you to review BCIT's awards, scholarships and bursaries that are listed on our financial aid and awards webpage. Um, always want to mention the President's Entrance Award, which is money towards tuition. Selection is based on academic achievement, but also volunteering community service. Accessibility Services Department. So BCIT is committed to providing assistance to students with permanent or temporary disabilities. If you believe you may need accommodation to be successful um, at BCIT, I encourage you to connect with our Accessibility Services Department. Uh, BCIT Indigenous Services, if you are Indigenous, please connect with our Indigenous Services. They are there to ensure a smooth transition into your program. They offer peer-to-peer -peer mentorship um, and a welcoming gathering place and provide um, further clarification on any Indigenous funding. So this slide uh, covers laddering opportunities, both at BCIT and other post-secondary institutions. You could consider continuing on to do the Magnetic Resonance Imaging Advanced Certificate and Bachelor of Health Sciences at BCIT. You may want to continue to do a Bachelor of Health Science through the Thompson Rivers University. Uh, we have a Health Leadership Advanced Certificate we offer at BCIT as well as a Bachelor of Technology in Technology Management at BCIT as well. So if you've got any questions after today, I encourage you to connect with Program Advising. We're available via telephone, email, virtual, or in-person drop-in. Uh, please go to our web page, excuse me, which is just bcit.ca backslash advising for our up-to-date contact information and service hours. If your inquiry is time sensitive, uh, I encourage you to give us a call. That's the fastest way to get an answer to your question. Excellent. Thank you so much, Janice. I really appreciate all that information. And now I'll just uh, take over for a moment. Please contact us or follow us on our social platforms. There's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Lots of great videos to watch on YouTube. And of course, uh, the bcit.ca website has a lot more resources. I believe the spend a day is coming back for a lot of programs and that's great. And of course, info sessions and big info are a great way to find out a lot more information. And that brings us to our questions and answers segment. I was about to type one there, Darren, and then 
I heard you end, so it ended, so I stopped. Um, <laughs> there was a question about um, if we're out of town, are we responsible for our own accommodation? And the answer is yes. So you do have to find your own accommodation. Um, I do find that sometimes in the smaller uh, hospitals, if you're having trouble finding something, there's sometimes some resources like you can contact the site and see if they know anyone who's renting out or contact maybe a previous cohort, see if they have any leads. Um, but it is your job to find your own accommodation. Great. Thank you, Heather. Uh, does anyone want to feel the um, is BCIT's BHSC 1200 an appropriate equivalent for the human biology prerequisite? No takers? I am. I no. You know what? I am just checking that out because the BHSC 1200 is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's the anatomy and physiology course. So it's an advanced course, which um, would be accepted, but it is more than the uh, anatomy and physiology 12 that we're asking for um, within the entrance requirements. But yes, I, we we would take that. It's, it's human biology, yes. Anyone else has some more questions, please uh, put them in. This is a great opportunity to have a program advisor and two program heads slash instructors online. Uh, here's one from Julia. I completed high school outside of Canada, but I am currently completing the program prerequisites at BCIT. Do I need to submit a certified translation of my foreign high school certificate or does the BCIT transcript suffice? That is, um, I would, would probably recommend speaking further with a program advisor on exactly what that looks like, because so completing high school, has previously done high school out of Canada, but is doing the specific prerequisites to the program at BCIT. I'd be wanting to have a discussion with Julia, because as mentioned before, the people that have applied to the program also have additional post-secondary. So you haven't mentioned that you've done post-secondary as well. So we would probably talk to you a little bit further about what the competitiveness of the program is and how you can prepare for that. Okay, thank you. Julia added that uh, her degree is from Germany. I would probably still want to have a discussion with her before applying, just to make sure that she's got everything, everything um, ready to apply. Just to confirm, math, bio, physics, and other requirements is must be completed within the last five years. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, the competitiveness of, of, of the program is, is quite heavy, like we mentioned. So um, having uh, your final grades and the entrance requirements having been done in the last five years will make your application more competitive. Uh, what is the length of time for the placement outside of the Lower Mainland? And is there one or more than one outside of the Lower Mainland? Thank you. Oh, I, Ken is on that. I can, yeah. I can answer that. Um, typically, a placement outside the Lower Mainland would be about 13 weeks uh, at, say, at minimum. Um, however, uh, they could be longer, especially if you are, say, a resident from uh, Kamloops, for example, that... Um, you know, would like to work in that particular area, and that somehow works out. Um, but uh, typically, consider that the shortest uh, out of the lower mainland rotation would be about 13 weeks. Alexandra is asking, how many applications do you receive on average um, versus the number of students who are actually accepted into the program? Well, <laughs> we're a very highly competitive um, program and so we do um, certainly see probably around 150 to 200 applicants um, per intake however uh, we often interview around 80 to 85 and the intake for the diploma is um, 36 students whereas with CAD we typically have around 50 or so applicants um, and we interview around 30 and there's 12 spots. Mm -hmm. Wow, thanks, Ken. That's very helpful. If I can just add to regarding recency with upgrading, I do I, I do want to stress that a preference is given to applicants that have a five-year recency in math, specifically um, math, biology, and physics. So those are the ones that are most important to have been done in the last five years, right, Ken? Yeah. Yes, that's correct, Janice. Um, I saw there's another question here uh, about what's the purpose of the interview. 
And the purpose of the interview is actually to assess fit. Uh, certainly, we can look at um, ethical responses and communication using Casper. However, it's always important, I think, to meet our candidates uh, because we are frontline workers and we're going to be dealing directly with patients. And so it's important to be able to communicate and convey information uh, in these types of situations. And certainly uh, the interview process is a structured type of process and that way we can um, convey a scenario and see how you respond in those instances. And it gives us an opportunity to meet you and um, uh, we can see how um, you would work in those types of situations. So I hope that uh, answers your question. Um, Natalie's asking, I believe you mentioned some placements could be in Northern Vancouver Island as well as the interior mainland. So yes. Just a yes or no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is correct. I don't know, maybe, maybe we want to add, I think our most northern site is probably Campbell River. I don't think we have any sites more north of that for the island. Um, that is correct. Yeah. yeah. So Campbell River, Courtney, Nanaimo, those are all places that um, our students would um, be going to potentially. However, we share Vancouver Island with Camosun College. So we uh, certainly meet with them and um, we share various clinical sites so that if there are students that attend BCIT that are from Vancouver Island and want to return to perhaps work in Victoria, Nanaimo, or the northern part of the island, we try to facilitate that the best we can. Uh, how much weight does the visual spatial test have upon our application, and do you have any recommendations to prepare for it? I can answer that one as well, too. So <laughs> the visual spatial test is um, part of step two of the selection process. And certainly uh, it's weighted as part of our rubric. And it just helps us to make an informed decision on whether or not you'd be a good candidate. What should be the minimum hours of volunteer work? Yeah, I can answer that one. It's part of our um, our screening for the um, applications. There's no magic number, but we are looking like ideally 50 hours or more is good, but even if you have less than that, put it down because you'll you know, get some points on your rubric for having any volunteer work. Um, the more, the better. Uh, we're also looking for recent volunteer works. If it was 20 years ago, you're not gonna get many points for that. So you no know, recent uh, and you get kind of a stronger score if it's healthcare related or working with people. Is the sonography diploma valid for work in the US? or would that require further equivalency testing? I can answer that. Um, at BCIT, we uh, train uh, candidates for uh, the national, re according to a national standard and the national requirements. So uh, you would be certified to work in Canada if you write the Sonography Canada registry exam and complete the uh, clinical assessment tests, uh, as well as um, there is a registry in the United States and so some of our students actually opt to write the ARDMS or the American uh, Registry exams. And if they write and pass their ARDMS exams, they can work in the United States as well. So uh, anyone that goes through the BCIT program is well set up to work uh, both in Canada and internationally. Excellent. Ken, and I think that kind of answers the next question. Does this program transfer between provinces? If I successfully complete this program, can I work in Alberta or Ontario? Yes, that is correct. We are a accredited program uh, by our national certification body. And if you complete the BCIT program, you can work in any province uh, in Canada. You know, however, there may be college requirements that you might have to meet, for example, not only would you be able to work in Ontario, but you'd have to meet the Ontario uh, professional college requirements that they have as well, too. But certainly that is all provided through BCIT. Um, right now, there are no more questions, but if anyone has any last minute, because we have just a couple more minutes left, I'm going to bring up uh, some important email addresses. So if you think of questions afterwards and they're program specific, you can uh, email sonography at bcit.ca. And if it's more of an admission type question, you can um, email program underscore advising at bcit.ca and they'd be more than happy to answer any questions. I'll just allow just another moment to see if any last minute questions come in, but so far there's nothing. I'll just uh, 
put a reminder that a copy of the slide presentation and a link to this video recording will be sent out uh, by email to all registrants um, probably later next week sometime. And if there's nobody else with any questions, I'm going to, oh, here we got, we got one. What is more competitive or popular for applicants, uh, dual or general sonography? That's a tough question. Um, I think it's 50-50. And it seems to be a little bit different each year. I, In the past, I would have said dual was more popular. I think our last cohort general was. Um, but I think it's also important to notice that you'll be considered for both. So even if you apply for dual and all the dual spots are taken up, if you scored really, really well and there's still spots, we'll ask if you want the general. So we'll ask you on the application, would you like to be considered for the other one? So I would say go with what you really want, not what you think you have the better chance in, because it's really 50-50. Nice. Thank you, Heather. That's great. Okay, I'm going to just say thank you to everyone for being here, and I really appreciate all the participation and the great questions. <laughs> There's one more. We have one minute left, so I'm going to fit it in here. Uh, what would you say is better career choice, sonography or radiography? I am interested in both fields, but can't <laughs> decide on one. That's a tough one because we don't want to put our partners down. Um, right. But uh, I mean, Ken and I both love sonography. So um, we've, we're very happy with our career. Um, I would recommend looking at um, like the career fields, like the uh, opportunities of jobs and the pay rates between the two. And uh, the length of the programs are pretty similar. So I think it comes down to what you're passionate for. But, but Ken and I could both speak very highly of sonography. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I actually am a former radiographer. I did x-ray first before I did sonography. So I hold two diplomas from BCIT as well as my degree. And, you know, I, I enjoyed radiography. I think it's an excellent career. Uh, and uh, I just enjoyed uh, sonography more, I guess. <laughs> and so I made the switch and uh, enjoying what I'm doing now. So, um, yeah, it's a tough decision because both uh, do offer a lot of benefits. We could also add to you can apply to sonography x ray change their start date to January. So if you're not sure you could apply to sonography and if you don't get in, you'll I think you'll know in time to switch your application over to the x ray program. Um, so you can, you know, try for one and if you don't get in uh, the x rays are. I think it's a little bit easier to get into the MRAD program right now. So you could try for both. Great, Heather. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Heather and Ken and Janice and Aaron in the background for all your hard work. Really appreciate that. Uh, we're out of time. So I'm going to thank you all for being with us today. And uh, we wish you all the best in your future in health sciences. And I uh, hope you have a great night. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>